Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, wherever you are. Welcome to My Creative Life. I'm Key, and right now, we are about to have a spiritual conversation on this Mindset Monday. I'd like to introduce you to my very special friend, this beautiful, lovely lady who is so fashionable, who is so inspirational. She's going to share with us some of her experiences on today's Mindset Monday. Her name is Miss Princess, and she does a podcast over at No Cap, Just Raw. I've guest starred there a few times. If you have not checked it out, you definitely should. There are some gems in there. Don't miss out, okay? But hi, Miss Princess. How are you? Hey, Key. What's up? <laughs> About to enjoy what we're getting into. We always have a lovely conversation when we are together. It just feels like the divine energy flows through so naturally for us. So everybody, today's topic for our Mindset Monday is spiritual confirmation. How do you know that God is working in your life? So Miss Princess, do you have any signs that show up when God is working in your life? Yes. Um, oh my gosh. And that question is such a loaded question because there's such a loaded answer to it. Um, I want to start off by saying that when it comes to the things of the spirit, um, it never really means anything until you start to understand it for yourself. And what I mean by that is, you know, there are a lot of people who grew up in a household where they were introduced to whatever religion that they're living through right now as an adult or as a teenager and whatnot. And so in my household, I grew up living through Christianity. And that's what I was introduced to um, from the day I was born. And uh, I really begin to, um, my spiritual journey, I lived it, you know, I was living it through my parents. So my parents were like God to me because they're the one who introduced me to God. They're the ones who were telling me about what the Bible says and what I should and shouldn't do. And they were the example of living out these principles that they were teaching me in the Bible. And so um, it never, my relationship with God never became a thing until I was an adult and I had to learn to pray and try it for myself and say, okay, I'm going to try this. My mom always says, pray. Okay. I'm going to pray then. Um, if something's wrong, if I'm sick, my mom says, pray. That was the answer to everything. Pray about it. Pray about it. We didn't go to the doctor. If we were sick, we prayed about it. And so, um, but like I said, it never became serious until I started seeking for myself. If that makes any sense. That makes sense. I think everyone should develop their own relationship with God. And it does take a while to understand when God is speaking back to you, because that's a whole other thing. Praying is sending out that message and then receiving the answer is a whole other thing. It's like you have to meditate and kind of decipher what God is trying to tell you. So how did you figure out that God is talking back to you? Or have you figured that out yet? So um, I'm going to share this quick testimony because um, I remember it vividly like it was yesterday. Um, so my relationship with God actually started through a dream. And mind you, I knew God. I always prayed. I read the Bible and I felt connected to God. But I never and I, God would talk to me um, in his own way. But my relationship with God took the next level when. My mom, she had a dream and she she shared the dream with me. She was like, hey, I had this dream that this man and his whole entourage came to me and asked for your hand in marriage. I was like, what? What man is this? And she described the man. She said he had long hair and she described his entourage, that he had these angelic beings with him. These, and, and so in my mind, I was just confused. I was like, my hand in marriage? It was confusing. And I heard the dream. And she had the dream again. And she's like, he came to me and he asked me for your hand in marriage. And I was like, okay, I'll marry him. Like what? I don't get it. And so fast forward, um, after she had this dream, I had a dream that I died. 
And I'm looking at myself. I see myself on the ground, just dead. And I'm I'm there looking at myself. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> no, go ahead. You said something. I said, yikes, that sounds scary. <laughs> and, you know, in the dream, you can tell when a dream is like a nightmare and you can tell when it's like uh, some kind of revelation. And so in the dream, when I saw myself, I wasn't afraid. I didn't have that feeling of like, oh my gosh, this is like, you know, a nightmare. It was more like I was being rebirthed or something. Like I was a new person. And so I went through all that, the whole dream situation, seeing myself die, come back to life. And, and then I went through this period where I fasted and I fasted for 40 days. And I remember like I started reading my Bible so much in this season of my life. Like that's all I did. So I was fasting and by fasting, let me clarify to everyone because fasting means something different to everybody. Um, I wasn't, um, eating any food. So I was just drinking water, drinking fluid, drinking juice and reading my Bible like consistently. And Kitty, let me tell you, girl, this fast almost took me out. <laughs> when I got to day 10, I said, I'm going to die. Like, I can't do this. Like, I remember t telling God, I was like, I don't think I can continue with this fast. Like, I'm literally going to die of starvation. Uh -huh. And because I was reading my Bible and, and for anyone out there listening, like you really can't hear God clearly if you don't know the word. The word is really the, the filter of hearing his voice and knowing that he's talking to you and what gives you the, you know, that feeling where you feel like certain that conviction, uh -huh. like it, it, sometimes uh -huh. it feels like shock waves going through your body or yeah. Like someone just punched you in the gut and you're like, yeah, I got to do this. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I've had those feelings before. And, and I want to touch on the topic of fasting. Fasting is very powerful when you are asking God for something or just wanting to be a receiver of the word for sure. Um, even if you read the Bible, even if you are just praying, remember everyone has their own relationship to God and God will give you his word. You will know God when God is there for sure. But fasting, it is not for the weak. <laughs> it is not for the weak. Let me tell you that. But you will receive the clearest messages when you are fasting because your body will not be focusing on breaking down so much solid foods and all of this heavy toxins that you may be intaking through your diet. So you're cleansing your body and you're cleansing your mind as well. So if y'all have not tried fasting, you should try it at least five days of fasting. Or even if you're going to do a fast from maybe I used to do a 10, was it 10 hour? No, actually it was 24 hour fast where I would eat at 6 PM and then eat at 6 PM the next day that type of fast. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't go on a fast where I didn't eat at all because I don't think I could actually make it through that. But my metabolism is so high that I would not make it through that. Yeah. So I've done a fast before and I've seen the most blessings come in through fasting and praying and having a spiritual routine. So she's 100% on that. Um, so it sounds like you get a lot of your confirmations or your relationship started with like dreams. Did fasting kind of enhance that where you got that sense of knowing, but the now you like know in your dreams or anything? Oh my gosh. Yes. So when I started fasting and, and like you said, my metabolism, my metabolism is very high as well. So I was really, really skinny. People thought I was sick and things like that, but my senses were heightened. Like, because I wasn't eating, I can't explain it. It's like, it's like I had a sixth sense. Like, I felt everything and it was strong. And sometimes it scared me because I was just like, does anyone not see this? Does anyone not feel this? And my thoughts in my mind were so clear and positive and there was like no negativity. I, and I, it's like I was high. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who may be able to try to relate like it's like I was literally on a dr some kind of drug because it was just unreal what I was feeling and so yeah my senses were heightened I smelled things that other people didn't smell 
I could hear things that other people didn't hear. I recall a time when during my fast, um, we were praying for a woman and I literally heard the spirit inside of her. <laughs> wow. She had a she had a demon inside of her and I Oh my her. gosh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So at that time I was involved in a lot of spiritual activities, especially at church, praying for people, healing and deliverance. And I mean, I I I if I tell you all the countless deliverances that we did during that period of time, we'd be here all day. But I remember one instance, yeah, I heard this demon in this woman and we were we were talking to her and we were trying to explain to her her issue and the demon was like hmm like like who you guys think you are like you think i'm gonna come out of her like that's not gonna happen type of thing <laughs> so i i heard it and i looked around the room and nobody like no one flinched no nothing and i was like i think i was the only one who heard this because it was so loud it was great hmm. <laughs> I've had similar experiences with spiritual confirmation when there is someone with an energy that I just do not agree with. Um, it's been many times where I have to like take a step back because there's times where you get the message, but like you said, other people don't get the message. And if you being in a sensitive space or a spiritual space, you're talking about it and no one else is seeing the signs, you're like, you might sound like, oh, you're just trying to hate on this person or you just have something against this person. But when I have those moments, I'm like, I go into meditation. I go into prayer. I write about it. I, I love God. I believe God is everything. I will pull my tarot cards for it. I really do believe that my messages and my signs and confirmations also come through artistic ways. And so I see tarot as an art of God. And if you don't understand tarot at this point, and you're afraid of tarot because you are afraid of demons, then you need to get a stronger relationship with God. At least you can have your own opinions, but I've known plenty of readers who are solely about God and bringing forth the message. It's kind of like prophesying in real time. Right. Um, so like how princess, you get messages through visions, through feelings, through your dreams when i'm pulling a tarot card i can see the message through the card and through the symbols in the card and words just start flowing through and it's certain situations so if i feel that somebody has an energy that i'm not agreeing with and i'm like this does not feel like this is for my highest good and then i take a step back i'm like okay my highest good might be a bit of a selfish intention is this energy for the harmony of all is this energy a heavenly energy? Because I firmly believe in angel signs. You believe in angel signs? Um, I think you're, you mean like numbers, seeing numbers and things like that. Numbers, feathers, or anything that's out of the ordinary. Absolutely, because it's it's definitely connected to 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 God, and you know, I've received a lot of messages where God would give me a sign by showing me a number like one one thing i would say is that i've for the past two three years i've been seeing 11 11 like non-stop oh. every that i see 11 11 is the number of new beginnings wish fulfillment um it symbolizes like a triumph and a, a fresh start it's a number of creativity as well as manifestation that means that you are aligned with your divine guides. So I think that I'm like you, I think that everything is connected to God. I do believe in angel numbers. And so when I have a feeling that feeling like that gut punch feeling about something, someone, some location, I'm like, what do I do about this? And that's when I, I would either pray or I would consult with my cards to see more confirmation. I'm like, all right, maybe the world doesn't understand it, but I know what I'm feeling right now. And I'm going to listen to that. Cause that's, that's my confirmation. You know, that's God speaking through me and saying, Hey, like, that's not for you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. And I never, when I experienced that kind of stuff, like how you say you, you, you heard a demon speaking in somebody. I've had that experience as well, where I've noticed that someone is trying to put like a love spell on me or 
Like there's a certain energy that they're sending towards me consciously. And I'm like, you don't, I know you don't believe in God if you're sending that kind of, mm-hmm. that kind of energy, manipulative energies or people who just want some kind of form of control and power. I'm like, there's no way you can believe in God and try that with somebody. So I would be like, I'll hear it. And I'm like, oh no, I'm just going to change, either change the channel change the conversation or walk away because I'm not dealing with this. You will not trap me into this. Like yes. that's, that's the beauty of having a relationship, like a very intimate relationship with God where you can understand those signs. It does take some time to get into that. Yes. Are there any like situations where you did something out of intuition and out of the message of God and everybody kind of looked at it like, why would he do that kind of thing? Yes. Um, oh my gosh. So during the same time, like during my fast, my 40 day fast and things like that, um, like that I had so many dreams and visions and revelation. I had a lot of deja vu moments too. Like I would literally wake, go to sleep, have a dream about the next day and I wake up the next day and everything I saw in the dream actually happened that person I saw that person and they greeted me the same way that I had in the dream and I was like this is deja vu because you said this to me in my dream and I knew you were going to do that so um I had a lot of moments like that I can remember one particular scenario where everyone thought I was you know bananas um I was ballistic because God actually started moving me (laughs) Hmm. it's hard to explain but it's exactly it's literally what i'm saying like he literally started moving me like i've heard people say physically like physically like people have been possessed where a demon will come through and i don't i believe that demons will take over a person's body they can climb the walls they can do like crazy things and people think that's not real that is very much real there are people when they are demonically possessed, they eat glass, they eat metal. Um, you could try to stab them and their skin is not, you can't pierce their skin. Like there's a lot of strange things that are actually true and real. And so for me, one of those strange moments, and it was publicly because we were ministering to some some of the youngsters at that time. And I was part of that ministering process. And as I was ministering to them on the word of God and things like that, the Holy Spirit began to manifest to show them signs and wonders that he was actually in the message that I was bringing to them. And so I was literally laying on the ground and he started moving my arms. And this is the first time he ever did something like that to me. So I was kind of like in a, I was unconscious, but I was conscious. I can't even explain it. Um, And my arms started to move. And the little girl who was there was like, look like look what's going on and everybody was looking in 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 awe and you would think like it's like how do i say it you can't you just know it wasn't me moving my arm i can't explain it everybody just knew it wasn't me the way my arms were moving and the movements and everything it's like everybody knew it was something supernatural and ever since that day when he moved me like that the holy spirit moved me like that he always kind of it still happens till this day he still hmm. moves me like I'll be walking somewhere and he'll take over my legs and start moving my feet and like, no, let's go this way. I want to show you something. Let's go to this aisle. Like I'll go in the store and I was like, what soap should I buy? He said, I'll show you. And he'll take hmm. you, literally lead me to the aisle. I don't even know where the aisle of the soap is, but he leads me exactly where the soap is. And he chooses the soap. And I'm like, why this one? He's like, just. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yes. I've, I've definitely had some of those experiences where God will be like, today, you're just going to go on a walk, a long walk. I'm like, I don't know why I'm going on a long walk. I'm not going to question it because I trust that you have my best interest in mind. I've had near death experiences where I wasn't there consciously. And where my body took over or, or I feel like, you know, spirit took over. I don't even know how I got out of these situations. I'm like, you just don't, you can't explain it. It's like there and not there. Even if I'm doing a reading, 
I get out of my own way. I'm like, this is not my message. Whatever my opinion is about this message, if I'm administering a message to someone through my cards or through divination, which is, a, you know, when I say that, it's kind of like a topic that's kind of taboo in some churches. So I say it with like a little bit of a grain of salt. I'm like, you know, readings and divination because they're like, no, you're not supposed to do that. And not that. But I've seen enough readings where I am not there. I let the divine speak through me. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm saying this. I don't know why it's coming out like this. But obviously this person has to hear it with their physical ears because they have the ears to hear. And I'll just say it. And I'm not there. And I'm like, I don't even know what happened in that message. And then I'm just like, <laughs> like at the end of it, I'm like, wow. And the person just sitting there like, oh my God. I'm like, wow. yeah. <laughs> It's like you're there, but you, I don't even know. I, I'm trying my best to put it into words. Um, but God moves through you physically and gives you those physical messages. And I, with me, I know he moves through my communication skills. I'm always saying something that somebody was either thinking about or they were like, I needed confirmation on. And I'm like, I didn't even know you were thinking about that. I just felt like I should say it. I'm not going to judge it. I'm just going to let it flow through. Then there's some scary things that I'm like, hmm, should I say this to this person? Because this person might look at me and be like, who are you? Like, you know, like, that's something that I'm still kind of like, I'm not 100% with because I don't want somebody to have the wrong reaction. Right. You know, like you said, like demons are real. And if I approach somebody and they are demonically possessed, or at least they are not fully in Christ's energy and their vessel is not completely, you know, of God. If I say the wrong thing, is this person going to hit me? <laughs> I might give them the wrong spiritual confirmation and the demon might just be like, bitch. <laughs> So that's why, like, I just can't do that part. Like, do you ever get scared of that? If you're in ministry, because what you went through is very powerful. Do you get scared that somebody might, like, physically, like, hurt you or anything? No, it's, it's you know, we're laughing, but, y'all, it's true. You got to, like, if you're going to carry a message to someone, you have to be absolutely, you have to believe. First of all, you have to believe in what the message that you're going to carry out because they smell fear. And the demons, they know when you're afraid. And that's when they do actually do attack. They attack through fear. So if you carry this message, though, in confidence, 10 out of 10 times, you will not be uh, attacked. Because if what you're saying is true and what you said is coming from God, God is your cover. He will cover you. He will protect you. And they will see God on you. So they will be afraid of you in return. Because I've had many scenarios where i carry out a message to somebody and this person starts shrieking or, or screaming and, ah, and I'm just oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, dude, are you it's hungry? Like the are you for real? <laughs> um, but yeah, I had to learn like, cause it's happened a lot of times where I will say something that God is telling me to say, and this person becomes angry. And, you know, and God just reminding me, like, I'm with you. Like, the angels are with you. Nothing can touch you. Nothing can harm you. So I have to, like, be confident in that. And I've had, I've had moments, though, where I've delivered messages and I wasn't very confident. Um, no one has ever really hit me before or anything like that. But I've been in situations where, where I delivered the message and the person did not receive it. They rejected what I was saying, they're like, nah, what you're saying is a lie. And they reacted in anger. And everybody's looking at me like, ooh, like, ooh, you said that was God. Why they're not receiving it, you know? <laughs> and I'm just like, whatever, like, it's your life. If you don't want to receive the message, that's 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 you. But sometimes I felt embarrassed, you know, because I was a babe in Christ at that time. So I wanted this person to receive what I was saying. And sometimes they didn't. Because I was sometimes I was scared in my deliverance. So it, it makes a difference. You have to believe in what you're saying. And you can't be afraid because, like I said, these demons, they are conniving. They are huh. intelligent. 
They're very intelligent. They know the word. They know the word and they know God better than we do. I mean, they're the fallen. So they've been in God's presence. So uh -huh. we, we're we just born into this life and we're learning about God. We're reading the word and we're going through experiences that makes us stronger in our knowledge of God. Them, their knowledge of God is like heightened. It's next level. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. if you're going to deal with a demon, if you're going to deal with anything in the spiritual realm, and I always tell people like, my first language is the things of the spirit. Literally. Oh, love that. That's I love that. <laughs> oh, I love that you just said that. You just gave me confirmation and you don't even know it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I Oh my gosh. No, because I seriously, I was having this battle right now, like feeling like my desires or just humanly earthly desires that are being projected to us as humans, they're starting to take over. So um, I'm just going to say it now um, because I want to use, I want to use this example of something that happened to me recently. And I'm just going to share the news y'all. I'm in my first trimester of pregnancy and <laughs> This has opened my eyes to another experience where I'm like, wow, I have to, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about human desire and how I'm going to raise my child to be spiritually conscious and be spiritually happy before being happy in the earth. So when Princess just said that, Jesus Christ, I'm like, she's, she's reading my mind right now. But I recently had a situation where I was super nauseous at work. I was throwing up and just not feeling well. And, I, and there was two days that I could not go to work at all. And I spoke to my manager about this. We had a, a little meeting and, you know, they were talking about how to bonus and everything like that. And there was something that was said that was super insensitive to me. So I said, I let him know that I was in my first trimester of pregnancy. And he said, well, you know, I was like, first off, I was like, well, it's going to get harder because I'm nauseous and I need a later time to come in due to morning sickness. And so he's like, oh, well, you know, it, ch children are expensive um, and you need to hustle hard while you can. So let's go make money. I was like, if that's not a, a demon that just told me to not feel comfortable, to try even harder to earn money when I am physically carrying a child and I'm nauseous, that irked my soul. I was like, there's no way that there are people that are this insensitive or spirits and energies because sometimes people say what these entities want them to say and not exactly what they mean to say. Because they think it's the right thing, they have a desire, they have a goal, and they might let an entity speak through them. So I think that sometimes a person like that might let an entity speak through them because they have one desire, which is money. So I'm like, wow, I'm going through the next week and I'm just feeling terrible. And I'm like, how can people expect someone who feels this sick to get up and make money and hustle? Are you kidding me? I could not expect a person who is fatigued beyond fatigue, they are exhausted to get up and say, well, you know, you need to get up and pay for your treatment. So get up and go work. Like wow. that just irked my soul. I'm like, that is not compassion at all. I had to forgive this person because I would be hurt. I'm still a little bit hurt about it. I, I don't like the idea of people running around and being that insensitive to any other pregnant woman, especially pregnant women of color, because I feel like I already work really hard. And to me, it made me feel like I'm less than and I, sh I shouldn't be able to have a healthy pregnancy because I need to work. Um, so I had to go into prayer and literally forgive this person because I felt like they were ignorant of what we are as human beings or what we are supposed to be as human beings. We are supposed to be spiritually enlightened. We are supposed to care for each other. We are supposed to speak from our hearts, not from our desires. I do believe that demonic entities will attach to you when your desire outweighs your compassion. 
when your desires for money, worldly things outweighs what your spirit, your spiritual nature actually is. Our spiritual nature is very pure. Mm -hmm. It's pure. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be something that wants to manipulate people. I could be happy with what I have right now. I could be happy with less. I'm not seeking the pleasures of this world. The pleasures of this world comes to me because I sought, I sought out spirit first. I sought out God first. Right. I don't want anything that's tainted. I don't want anything that's coming from a dark presence. And so, of course, I'm leaving that place. I'm not going to be going back there. It's been a long time coming. I've been dealing with those negative energies and entities for a while. And I'm just like, you know what? This pregnancy was my spiritual confirmation that no, you need to stay in the power of Christ. You need to not expose yourself to so many dark energies that don't have harmony in mind. Some people are walking around with these attachments. Mm -hmm. Their goal is to earn. These attachments are just, they're going to give you what you want. If you seek out the dark forces, they are going to give you what you want at a cost of others around you and at a cost of your life and your soul too. And some people don't understand that because they don't have a real relationship with God. You have a relationship with God. You will not go into any of that kind of dark manipulation, magic, any kind of thing like that. You're going to be like, oh, I know. I know not to mess with anybody. I know the force of God. Like, you got to be out of your mind to want to mess with some dark energies for real. <laughs> and that's true. And Lord. I, that is very insensitive, what he said. Um, and the Bible does tell us that money is the root of all kinds of evil. So um, money is nothing. Money should never be the goal in life. And God tells us that in his word. Um, so the fact that this man is telling you and you you're with child and he's telling you to pursue money as you're carrying another human being. I mean, let alone caring for ourselves is a huge deal in itself, let alone carrying another person. People don't realize it's a blessing to be with child, but it's also, it's, it's huge. It's a huge deal. Like you're carrying, you're carrying another human being in your body. Like, right. Um, and you to rest a lot. You have to take care of yourself. You have to eat yeah. on time. Like this, this person inside of you is depending on you to live. So yeah, that was extremely insensitive. Um, and I definitely don't operate in that. And that mindset of, you know, I need money. I, I mean, we all need money. That's the currency of this world. However, um, the goal is to seek purpose. And if you seek purpose, money will come looking for you. You don't have to look yes, for it. Because what you mm -hmm. want wants you. What you need needs you. Mm -hmm. so as you're being you, authentically, everything that's yours, and I mean everything, will come running after you. And it will look for you. So right now in this season, you may be in a season right now where you got to like pull back from work and things. And I've had seasons, girl, where I had to pull back from work um, and things like that. And God provided super naturally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you are in a season, yes, and you're in a season where you're pulling back, God is going to provide for you. He's going to make provision and he's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. And it's going to be like, what? I would have never thought that would work. And these doors will just open, these doors of opportunity, these work from home opportunities. You're getting a check in the mail. You're getting money in your account. And you're like, what? I just did this. And I didn't think I would get this much. So Girl, you are giving me verbal confirmation right now. You are the second person who has spoken on a sign, one sign that God is working in your life. You experience a bit of loss before you are replenished he clears out what you don't need to push you towards what you actually are meant for so thank you for that you gave me so much confirmation but yes y'all if y'all are experiencing any forms of loss or shifts or changes in your life that is a sign that god is actually about to come in and give you abundance give you prosperity give you love the main thing is love here. Give you lightness, replenish your soul, replenish your spirit, give you energy and vitality back. 
trust the process. When he speaks to you, giving you those bodily confirmations where he's telling you to walk somewhere, you know, or get up or lay down. Sometimes he's telling me to rest. He's like, look, you need to rest. Even though the world will say, get up, get up, get up, get up. No, you need to rest. He will tell you when to rest. You have to listen to those messages and tune in every day. In the morning when you wake up, first thing that should be on your mind is thanking God that you are up. Thanking the universe for even being there as a part of God to help us with our human experience. The universe is the material that God works through. So look out for those angel numbers. If you don't know all of the archangels, get to know the archangels because they will help you to stay on your path. There are so many signs and synchronicities and confirmations that God is providing you. When you open your eyes to see them, oh my goodness, you'll be like, I, I can't believe that this is real. And then it becomes normal. It becomes super natural. <laughs> it's like a second layer of skin. Yes, yes. It becomes second nature. It becomes like a second layer of skin. You will know that God is with you at all times. And even through the time where it feels difficult to walk away from something or listen to a direction. Remember, you have an ego as a person, but there is a spiritual message that is working through you all the time. Yeah. Tune into that spiritual message, get to know it. Clear out all of those doubts, those fears, clear out the trauma, find God within everything and you will find God every day, okay? So I just wanna thank you, Princess, so much for sharing your experiences here on Mindset Monday on my channel. I really do appreciate that. I appreciate your perspective. Um, y'all, y'all have to go check out No Cap, Just Raw. We have a series called A Valued Girl where we talk about experiences as women, women of color, and we just want to enhance those who are seeking to feel more valuable and those who are seeking to understand more about themselves. We drop some gems there, okay? What? We are dropping the gems there. Y'all gotta go mine them. Go mine them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you wanna add anything, princess? Yeah, I just wanna say that, you know, to top it off, you know, there's a lot we could have said today, but the important thing is like you just said, love and God is love. And um, everything you do should be driven by love. The Bible tells us to do everything in love, you know, First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. So um, seek God, seek him for yourself. Um, it can be challenging and confusing, when, you know, people are telling you and you're like, no, I don't feel that. If you don't feel it, then seek it for yourself. And I promise you, you will not regret it. You will definitely find God, you'll hear from God, and he speaks to everyone differently, you know, and whatever I shared, whatever you shared, he, you know, these are our personal experiences, but God has a, a relationship that he wants to develop with each and every one of us, and we have to seek that thing, we have to seek that relationship, and when we yes. find it, when you find it, life just makes so much more sense. Uh -huh. Yes. Thank you so much, princess. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and share a comment about what you most resonated with today. Okay. So I just want y'all to do two things. I want y'all to stay happy and stay healthy. Oh yeah. And tune in to the next video. Peace out. Bye.